Hey, in this video, I'm going to review Hertz, the rental car company. So we're going to do a 4M analysis. I'll start with the margin of safety. That's the math part of investing that Ticker does for us. And then we'll talk about the meaning, moat, and management. Let's dive in. So with this stock, I was a bit surprised when I first logged in. I see a 95 out of 100. That is outstanding. This is a company that went bankrupt and then went recently public in the last few years. So to hit a score that high, and we'll get into the reason behind that in a little bit, but overall, that, that is quite impressive. Then we look at the margin of safety. You can see here 90%, share price is around $18, and then the fair value is 93. So a lot of upside potential. Um, but overall, the financials do look really good. Ticker saves us a lot of time, so we don't have to spend a lot of time here on the financials. Um, I did wanna show you one thing. We'll go to the financials tab. We are on quarterly, and if we jump to income statement, I'll actually go to EPS. This is really what drives that margin of safety. You can look at our open source uh, calculations. If you just go to ticker, um, there's an education tab. And then below that, there's a drop down and you can read about the calculations. But this is really impressive. We went from a 0.91 on the most uh, two quarters ago, our EPS went up to 2.36. So really nice improvement there. So that's a key driver. All the financials are looking really good. Again, 95 is, is outstanding. But let's spend a little more time on the business. Um, just to give a little context, I like to do a review, like a historical review of a company so I really understand where they've been and, and kind of bring us to date. This was really fascinating. I won't spend too much time on the history, but this was cool. 1918, company was founded and they first rented out Model T cars. I did not know that. We fast forward to what recently happened. Um, uh, two years ago, of course, you had COVID. And what happened during that time is a lot of people stopped traveling. Um, if we take a closer look at what happened in 2020, um, Hertz was not able to cover the payments, you know, the auto loan payments for its automobile fleet. You know, like a lot of people take out a loan on a vehicle, automotive companies or rental car companies will do the same thing. They don't own those vehicles all right, so they have loans. Well, with COVID, people stopped traveling, which means revenue drastically declined, but they still had to pay for these vehicles. So um, they went looking for uh, institutional help from banks, and those banks did not help them out. So it was actually May of 2020, Hertz filed for bankruptcy, and then they were delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. Well, what happened thereafter, just a few months after, is they were seeking a billion dollars in to raise funds to really restart the company again. And then it looks like they went public again in 2021. The market started opening up, COVID became uh, less prominent and people started traveling again. And that's what really caused this company to take off again, which was quite an impressive turnaround. You usually don't see that when a company goes private and then has to recover. But because of COVID, this was a unique circumstance. Um, but anyway, let's jump into the business model a little bit. So there's really three ways a rental car company makes money. Obviously, rentals. That's the primary revenue stream. Um, number two would be add-ons. These are the add-ons a lot of people pay for, and really, they, they don't have to. So I'll break this down. You can pay up front for the full tank of gas. In most cases, I was doing some homework here. When they do that, rental car companies do that, they're actually charging you almost 50% more um, to do that. So it's best if you're a traveler, just pay for the gas when you're out. Don't worry about the full tank and gas situation. They're going to get you on that. Number two is insurance. They're going to try to upsell you insurance and try to sell you in a way that um, your insurance company does not cover the costs uh, what happens to the vehicle. What you should do is before you go on a vacation and you are renting a car, call your insurance company and double check. That way you're not paying two different companies for essentially the same coverage. Um, and then the third way they get you with these little add-ons is tolls. So they're going to charge you as much as $20 a day, um, but it's better if you just pay for the tolls yourself. Like if you're crossing border in the States, um, for example, uh, where I live in Wisconsin, you cross the border to Illinois, uh, you're going to pay a couple of bucks. No need to pay 20 bucks for the full day. 
Um, the third reason is automobile sales. Usually when these vehicles get to about 20 to 25,000 miles, the rental companies are going to sell those cars to consumers directly as an option, otherwise dealerships or other companies. So that's the third way they make money. So let's break down some of the most recent news with this business. Um, just kind of highlighting a few details here. They do have really high debt. Rental car companies typically do because, again, they don't own their inventory. They have loans out on those cars. Um, there's another article here from Zacks that talks about uh, they're calling this business a strong buy because that EPS, like I pointed out before, is really increasing quickly. So that's good news for those that do hold Hertz, but I'm going to talk about uh, the competition here in a little bit. They did talk about, there's an article here from Wired, is rental car prices have increased. That's because companies like Hertz, they don't have the amount of cars that they used to. For example, 2019, they had about 700,000 cars. And now in 2022, with a lot of people traveling again, they only have about 424,000. So they're trying to build up their inventory again. Um, so if you're traveling and you're still having a hard time finding a car, a rental car, the reason is these companies are, they're trying to refill their inventory and it's pretty difficult. So that's why prices for rentals have gone up. Continuing on with some of the news is people are in a state right now with travel uh, even though we're in a bear market and some would classify recession, they're calling this uh, revenge travel. A lot of people did not get to travel over COVID, essentially a one to two year time period. So now they're trying to make up for it and traveling a lot. It's actually the number one thing people are spending money on right now. I know there's um, home renovations and, and home expenses have been hot too, but I found that really interesting. People do not care about this bear market recession. Unlike 2008, there's a lot of fear. People stopped traveling. They stopped with spending. In this case, people are like, nope, I'm still getting out there. I'm going to travel. That's a good sign for the economy. And it's a good sign for companies like Hertz. Um, I do want to point out that Hertz did buy, or um, they're in the process here, they don't have all the cars yet, but 100,000 Teslas. So if you go to Hertz, you can, not in all cities, but I did kind of do some uh, shopping around to see where I could find a Tesla, for example, Chicago. Um, you can rent a Tesla, and there are actually people who are renting, choosing to rent a Tesla, and they're not even traveling. So it's kind of like a try before you buy situation, which is creating another revenue stream for, for Hertz. They didn't really see coming. It's pretty cool. So people go to these local, you know, let's say your local um, rental location. Usually they're at an airport. They just want to rent a car for like two days. And they're doing that just to try before you buy. Well, another company that they're working with is Polster, also electronic vehicles. They've committed to purchase 65000 um, same situation here. Polster is a little more uh, global. It's not a popular car in the U.S., but same situation. People are, they're trying before they buy. They're renting these cars without even traveling just to give it a test drive. All right, so let's dive into the, the competition here. Um, so you have Hertz, you know, one of the big players out there. You also have Avis. Just a quick comparison, their score is 67 out of 100 compared to the 95, margin of safety is 64. So, so still decent, they're on sale, but not as strong as Hertz. So the problem we have with this business model really is the, the private uh, rental companies. Um, you've got Enterprise, Alamo, National Car, Dollar, Thrifty, uh, Car Rentals, Eurocar, and the list goes on. There's a lot. You go to an airport and when you... You exit the plane, you're walking through the terminal, you're going to see a lot of these companies just lined up right next to each other. And a lot of people, they're price shopping. So how does Hertz really stand apart from the competition? It's tough. You know, in a business like this, you don't want to race to the bottom and lower your prices. You do want to offer better cars, knowing that EVs are hot, the play with Tesla and Polster, I think that is a good play, especially that they're uh, generating revenue from people just trying before they buy. But um, that is the issue with this business that I think a lot of people are not looking at is the competition. Yes, a lot of people are in this revenge travel mode right now, but how long will that sustain? That's, that's the big question. Now let's jump to the management. This is where things um, 
not ideal. Um, it's good for the short term, but let's dive in. So Stephen Schur is the current CEO of Hertz. He's been in place since February 2022. Through COVID, there's a, there are a few CEOs, I think, tried and then left or, or were removed from the company. Um, so there's a bit of turnover. He has 28 years of experience with Goldman Sachs before this investment banking. So what I feel like he was put in place to really help improve the financials of the company, not necessarily build a strong culture. So... In this case, do I see Sure as a strong long-term fit for the company? No. And I've seen this with other companies in the past. Is they're going to bring in somebody that's more financial-minded, like let's say a, a, a contract CFO, if you will, that's working at different public companies. They're going to come in. They're going to be the CEO. They're going to be focused on that net income as well as that EPS to really get it back on track, but not always the best play for building a culture, getting that glass door rating pumped up. Um, speaking of, in this case, and you can't reflect this back on, sure, but the the Hertz uh, glass door rating is 3.2 out of 5. It's a bit lower than we'd like to see. we like to see 4.0 or higher. And then with the CEO rating, that was the previous CEO, um, the rating was, I'm looking here, was 57%. we like to see 80%. So we'll see what Sure's rating is. Um, although I don't see him staying at the company for, uh, for too long. So in summary with this company, I would say the, the margin of safety and meaning the first two M's look great. Those boxes check, but the issues for me are the moat and the management. Uh, way too many competitors in this case. It would be a risk if I were putting this in my actual portfolio. I will say this, when the market does correct, and a lot of stocks do start taking off, I think that Hertz is going to see some nice short-term gains. Um, if you're into travel stocks, I would say it's probably a stronger stock than the, the cruise stocks out there. But for a long-term hold, I would probably look at other businesses just because of that moat and then the, the management. I do, I do foresee a, a CEO change in the, in the coming years. I don't think Sure is going to stick around for the long term. That's just my gut feeling. But hopefully this review was helpful. Um, and I'd love to hear your feedback or recommend any other stocks you'd like me to review. Thanks.